Hi everyone. Today I wanted to try something different. So I've been uh, trying out this ChatGPT app, which many of you might already know about. I wanted to do an experiment today. So I have one of my artworks uploaded up to the, the app to ChatGPT and I wanted the, the program, the app to describe it to me. Of course, disclaimer, uh, the program already knows much about me as an artist. Uh, it's very familiar with the, the symbols, the, the figures, and all the recurring el visual elements in my work. But that makes it even more fascinating because the result that it gives is quite impressive, if you ask me. Because with all that knowledge, it can build and reinterpret the art in a much more accurate way. Not always. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's very close. And uh, I must say, it, it's, it's something you'll see. You, you just have to listen and see how it does. Uh, for those, again, who are not familiar with ChatGPT, this is an AI language model. Basically, it can hold conversations, reproduce text, and, and brainstorm ideas if you're an artist, it could be a useful tool. Of course, I understand why some artists are hesitant and resistant to the idea of using artificial intelligence. I respect that. Think of it as a virtual assistant that uh, helps you articulate and expand uh, your thoughts, whether it's about your art, uh, ideas, uh, any future projects you have in mind, and, and yeah describe art to. For the voiceover you're going to hear in this video, I used 11 labs. So without further ado, let's go into it. In this captivating work titled Apotheosis 2024, oil and gold leaf on panel, artist Patrick McGrath Muniz brings together elements of religious iconography, mythological references, and modern day commentary, creating a stunning fusion of the sacred and the profane, the ancient and the contemporary. At first glance, the composition draws the viewer into a rich and intricate visual narrative that evokes the structure of traditional religious altarpieces. The central figure at the top, radiating divine energy, is likely inspired by the Virgin Mary, though her demeanor and the surrounding context suggest a more nuanced interpretation, perhaps tied to Patrick's frequent use of archetypal figures. She floats above the scene in a mandorla of radiant light, arms slightly open in a gesture that could symbolize both protection and transcendence. Surrounding her, angels fly with symbolic instruments, further contributing to the celestial apocalyptic atmosphere. The left angel, depicted in armor and wielding a spear, seems to be a form of Saint Michael as he drives away dark demonic forces, a symbol of divine judgment or protection. Meanwhile, the angel on the right blows a trumpet, reminiscent of the Judgment Day in Christian iconography. Below this heavenly scene, the terrestrial plane is filled with tension and chaos. The central monk-like figure, hooded and mysterious, holds a book that reads Damihi Corpus, Give Me a Body, a Latin phrase which brings attention to mortality and, perhaps, the transient nature of physical existence. In his other hand, he holds a skull, a memento mori, a stark reminder of death and the inevitability of the human condition, elements frequently explored in Patrick's work. His body is illuminated as if he himself is a conduit between heaven and earth, possibly serving as a hermit or prophet, much like the hermit card in tarot calling us to reflect on wisdom, inner knowledge, and the cyclical nature of life. Around him, we see a collection of allegorical characters. To the left, a strong woman with bare shoulders, possibly representing Fortuna, the personification of luck or fate, stands near a broken wheel, a recurring symbol in McGrath Muniz's work that evokes the Wheel of Fortune from the tarot, a metaphor for the cyclical ups and downs of life. Her posture suggests she is witnessing or reacting to the apocalyptic events unfolding before her. Behind her, an old man carries the burden of the world on his back, alluding to the human struggle and endurance. To the right, a bald monk with a sickle hints at death. A reference to the Grim Reaper walking through the scene as a looming reminder of finality. A cherub at his feet draws the eye, holding a key that symbolizes potential or fate, while standing atop a reptilian creature, symbolizing the darker aspects of human nature that we try to overcome. 
In the background, the turbulent landscape filled with smoke, industrial towers, and ominous skies highlights the environmental and social decay, consistent with Patrick's critique of modern consumer culture and the ongoing tensions between technological progress and spiritual regression. The industrial elements, combined with a sense of ecological destruction, recall his concerns about climate change, global crises, and humanity's reckless consumption of the earth. At the bottom of the composition, a triptych-like panel further reinforces the religious altarpiece style showing two tarot cards, La Justitia, Justice, on the left, representing fairness, balance, and moral consequences, and El Juicio Final, the Last Judgment, on the right, a direct reference to reckoning and rebirth. In the middle panel, three female figures, likely the three fates, weave the threads of life, symbolizing destiny, time, and the inevitability of human mortality. The contrast between the celestial realm above and the terrestrial apocalyptic scene below heightens the tension and message of the piece. The outer frame, decorated with celestial imagery including the sun and moon with human faces, echoes the cosmic balance of light and darkness, another nod to the cyclical nature of existence, a constant theme in Patrick McGrath Muniz's work. Apotheosis reflects a deep meditation on humanity's place within the cosmos. The blending of sacred iconography with contemporary social and environmental issues challenges the viewer to reflect on our collective path. By juxtaposing religious and mythological symbolism with modern themes of decay and mortality, McGrath Muniz points to the tension between the spiritual and material worlds, urging us to confront our role in the larger cosmic order. His use of the tarot archetypes not only references divination, but also a universal language of fate, choice, and consequence, resonating deeply with the global challenges of our time. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the art of Patrick McGrath Mooney's. If his work has inspired you or sparked new questions, we encourage you to explore more of his pieces and share your thoughts below. Okay. That wasn't bad, right? In my opinion, there are a few things that could be better, right? Uh, but it, it's not bad at all. And one thing I must say, I'm not a big fan of Dali, Mid Journey, or all these other uh, AI models that can generate art. But when it comes to writing and reinterpreting, um, I mean, with words, not bad and uh, for me when it comes to art i don't want the machine to take away the fun out of the process for me the fun is image making making the images but when it comes to sometimes writing about art uh, reinterpreting art or trying to explain it uh, i understand why many artists are hesitant uh, about that part of the process myself included Sometimes I just don't have the time for it. So I find it quite interesting that the machine can do this. I'm not saying that the machine is going to replace writers or art critics or reviews, that you, articles that people write for art magazines. Uh, I mean, those are always going to be useful and, and, and have their value. But in terms of, of, of streamlining the process, it seems quite effective. It's qu quite useful. For an artist and let's not be hypocritical because uh, it's easy to to criticize technology and say that uh, technology is bad it's going to replace take out our jobs but just think about um, the part of the process that you are already skipping over right yeah oils in my case i always use oil paint it comes in oil tubes it's manufactured, mass produced. Uh, I don't go on grinding on my pigments, even though I know how to do it. It's time consuming. Weaving the canvas. I mean, let's let's just think about all the the, the steps in between. You know, between your materials and getting the final product you're really focusing on a very small part of the process as artists whether we're aware of it or not so what ai is doing is just taking one more part of it right out of the the, the equation and uh, 
if that gives us more time to focus on the things that in the process that we truly enjoy heck why not so uh, at the end of the day it's all about balance but and technology and use right can help us focus on what matters most which is creating exploring and having fun with the pro with the creative process but anyway that's my thought what do you guys think let me know in the comments and uh thank you very much for sticking around for this long and i'll see you on the next one bye bye thank you very much for sticking around till the end if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Also, check out the video on the screen right now for more insights and inspiration. Your support means everything to me and helps this channel grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.